Bob Dylan, Highway 61 Revisited, Velvet Underground, White Light, White Heat, the Rolling Stones, Beggar's Banquet, David Bowie, Hunky Dory, Serge Gainsbourg, Histoire du Melody Nelson, Patti Smith, Horses, Public Image Limited, Metal Box, Second Edition, Three, Three two, two, one, one, one. Play. 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 The one. Play. one that doesn't belong to the set. It's, it's the one record that, that I've chosen today that probably wouldn't appear on classic rock radio or uh, be make it onto certain top 50 lists, you know, the top 50 records of all time or whatever. Um, it's, it's the kind of record that generally you might, you know, you, would, you wouldn't probably expect to hear the rock geeks at the bar uh, debating the merits of this album, you know, relative to some of the other albums that, that we're going to be listening to today. Um, and I'm not exactly sure why that is. Uh, possibly because it's French. courting French pop music in a certain kind of way, at least uh, pop music as it was configured at that moment in time. Uh, you have to remember that at that moment, rock and roll and popular music were basically inseparable. Um, but it's it's courting pop music, but it's also transgressing all the boundaries that pop music has set up to define itself. So it's it's transgressing the boundaries of song form, of volume, um, of of high fidelity recording and production values. Um, obviously, it's transgressing the boundaries of, of the normal lyrical concern of a popular song where Lou Reed gives himself permission to sing about uh, ding dong sucking and so forth, and about about drugs. He talks about this music is more about um, uh, things but, like but some people like might gesture kind of or about um, a certain certain kind of performativity or um, about an attitude that's portrayed in the music and in, in the production values. That's not something that's strictly uh, captured in in traditional sort of musical values like virtuosity or or the the uh, the, the theoretical concerns of music and. And, and th these kinds of values that are in, in this sort of music are not easily codified in a discipline like musicology. Um, nor are they uh, properly um, accounted for in, in something like literary studies. Uh, th those kinds of disciplines, th that kind of thinking and those value systems and don't really apply. The apocryphal version of the uh, story is that the guy was stabbed and killed during uh, while, while the Stones were performing Sympathy for the Devil, which of course gives the song this kind of sinister, additional sinister uh, edge. Uh, in fact, the guy was actually murdered during uh, Under My Thumb, which I guess is a somewhat less appropriate song to die during. And, and incidentally, the guy who was killed... Uh, his name is often left out of the telling of this tale, and, and I think it's worth including it. You know, we, we know all about Mick Jagger being on stage at the time, but we don't know, in fact, that the guy who died, uh, that his name was, was Meredith Hunter. We, we and I think that's probably worth or, or reinserting with the story. All the um, major issues that confront 20th century philosophy, literary theory, psychology, politics, aesthetics, all of it, all of it in in rock and roll, in the way rock and roll actually is, in its ontology, it's it, the way that it that it um, that it constitutes itself, and and this may not have been planned by the the interested parties, by the the musicians and the and the singers and so on, or the fans or even the critics. But nevertheless, I think that rock rock and roll is the place to go if one wants to see these issues played out, illustrated, confronted in the most direct fashion possible.